Hello YouTube. I need to study for my biology exam. I also need to make a YouTube video. Let's put these two things together. Today I'm going to teach you about the 10 phyla that I have to know for my biology exam. And I'm sure that you will find them just as entertaining as I do. Before we begin, you should know that a phyla is the level of organization right under a kingdom when it comes to taxonomy. Phylum number one, phyla Calcarea and Silcia, also known as the sponges. Now sponges lack true tissue, but they have two layers of cells. One, the choanocytes, which actually take up the food, and two, the amoebocytes, which take that food and move it to other places. Phylum number two, Cnidaria, with a C. The Cnidarians co are composed of things like jellyfish, hydras, and sea anemones. They have two different body plans, one of which is the normal jellyfish body plan, called a polyp. The second body plan is called a medusa, and it is an upside down version of the polyp. This is stuff like sea anemones that sit in one place and have their little tentacles going out to try and get food. The third phyla is platyhelminthines, because I swear 30 out of the 35 different animal phyla are worms. Platyhelminthines include tapeworms, blood flukes, and other gross animals that are not good for humans. The flatworms are what's called an acelomate, which basically means they have an outside, they have an inside, and there's nothing in between those two. Next, we have a phylum called Rotifera, which is pretty much the strangest one I've learned about so far. They're these really, really tiny animals that are pseudocelomates, which means they have an outside, an inside, and something in between. Rotifera live in the water, and they do this awesome thing called parthenogenesis, where the females of the species create only more females. So basically, there are only female rotifera unless something goes wrong and they need a male. Five, phylum mollusca. Mollusks include things like snails, clams, and octopi. Mollusks have a basic body plan that is made up of three different parts. The visceral mass, which is the part of the animal that has all of the important stuff in it, the muscular foot, which is like the bottom part of a snail, and the mantle, which is the outer covering of the snail. Phylum 6, annelids. Annelida include segmented worms. What did I tell you about how everything is made up of worms? The annelid phylum are all coelomates, which means that in addition to the outside and the inside, they have a middle layer which is made up of muscles. Phylum 7, nematodes. Okay, nematodes always sound a lot more exciting than they are. They sound like they'd be like little newt frog hybrids or something. Actually, they're just round worms. Nematodes are really helpful in scientific research. In addition, they are indigenous to the soil in the south, and if you walk around without shoes on, you can get hookworms in your foot. Shoes are your friends. Phylum 8. Anthropods. AKA the phylum that proved that my mother was right all along. Basically, my mom always told me that lobsters are basically just giant water bugs. I thought that was kind of ridiculous until I learned that, in fact, insects, spiders, and lobsters all belong to the same phylum and have the same basic body plan. Anthropods are coelomates. They have an exoskeleton and they are also taking over the world. I mean that literally. They have the most species, over a million, and they're about 10 to the 18th power individuals on the planet. Phylum number nine, Echinodermata. Echinoderms are things like sea stars, sea urchins, and sand dollars. Did anyone else know a sand dollar was an animal? Because I thought it was a rock. Although adult echinoderms usually have radial symmetry, the larvae are usually bilateral, like humans. We have reached our tenth phylum, phylum chordata. Now when you usually think of an animal, you're probably actually thinking of a chordate. Chordate includes everything from fish, to reptiles, to birds, to humans. Now the chordates are a strange group, but they do have four things in common. One, the notochord, which is a long, flexible rod on the back of the animal which provides skeletal support. Two, the nerve cord. This is a long, hollow tube on the back of the animal that usually turns into the brain and the spine. Three, pharyngeal slits. These are present during embryonic development. They're little pouches that form posterior to the mouth, and they can either become gills, such as with fish, or ears, like with us. Four is a post-anal tail, which some species keep, and obviously with humans, we don't really keep that. It's just present in embryos. This has been 
10 phyla in 5 minutes. I hope I did not bore you too thoroughly. I have to go study all of these phyla in detail, in addition to animal nutrition, gastrulation, and quite a few other concepts. You go about your merry way.